Hi, good evening and welcome to uh, the Asata Dojo. Um, tonight we're going to run through a class of about 40 to 45 minutes on Hojundo. Hojundo means supplementary exercises in Japanese. And uh, Hojundo has been and is an important part of uh, traditional Okinawan karate training. Usually uh, supplementary exercises of Hojundo are used to improve uh, strength, endurance, uh, balance, structure. Um, and most of the exercises are based on movements that are common in karate. A lot of the whole Jumbo has its history going back to uh, Chinese martial arts. Um, and uh, uh, you can see, if you trace back, um, connections to uh, the kind of training that's used in uh, Chinese traditional martial arts, even further back to, say, martial arts in India and the East. What I'd like to do is take you through uh, an introduction to some of the uh, equipment that we're going to be using this evening. Um, hopefully, most of this, uh, what we'll, I'll show you tonight, um, you can find substitutes for this equipment if you don't have it at home. Um, but most of the equipment can either be bought fairly cheaply or made yourself. Okay, so to run through what we're going to use tonight. First item is uh, standard skipping rope. Uh, this uh, skipping is a great overall uh, exercise. Fantastic for fitness, um, and we're going to use it in our warming up phase. Exercise bands. So these are elastic bands. Um, this one, for example, was bought from a very cheap store, what you might call a dollar store. So they don't have to be expensive. Uh, this one also um, very inexpensive, just a few dollars or a few hundred yen. Uh, this one was actually bought from Amazon as part of a pack. Uh, so um, very easy to get hold of. Um, when you buy exercise bands, it's a good idea if you're going to um, get them in store online to get a set. So maybe two or three are slightly different sizes and widths and therefore different strengths. Dumbbells. Um, these are plastic dumbbells. It's about the cheapest kind of dumbbells you can find. Again, these actually came from uh, the uh, discount store, dollar store, whatever it's called uh, where you live. Uh, these are very light, probably only about one kilo each. Uh, we're going to use them for uh, continuous punching sets, so you don't need to have heavy dumbbells. Um, and you can find good substitutes at home with, say, cans of food or bottles of drink or, or other small items uh, of weight that you can hold very easily in a, in a clenched fist. Okay, dumbbells. These are kettlebells. Um, kettlebells a little more expensive to get hold of. Um, you can buy them generally in exercise stores, sports stores, or again, order them online. Um, kettlebells. These make a good substitute for traditionally uh, sashi ishi, uh, which is a, a traditional holder in the training kit. Again, a lot of the exercises that you can do with kettlebells, you can also do with dumbbells that you saw before. So if you can't get kettlebells, then dumbbells are a good substitute. These are chishi. So chishi are a very traditional training tools uh, in Okinawan karate, which you look. Chishi is a very, very simple tool. It's basically a weight, typically made of stone or concrete, that's attached to the end of a handle. And in this case, uh, these are ones that we made here. Uh, they're very easy to make, and I will be posting a set of instructional videos on how to make your own chishi in the near future. But you can also find that kind of thing on YouTube very easy too. Um, so basically, handle inserted into a weight, um, and these are used primarily for balance, for strength building, uh, and for dynamic kind of movements. Okay? It's a good idea if you're making chishi to try to make them in match sets, i.e. at least two that have the same weight and size and length. But you can also make larger chishi. So these are equivalent uh, to uh, Say uh, a good substitute for these, for example, uh, is a hammer. So this is a what we call sledgehammer in the UK. I guess you could call it like a rock hammer, maybe in some countries. You can get these in the hardware store. Uh, they're a little more expensive, um, but this is uh, a really useful exercise tool. Or you can make your own chishi, two-handed chishi. The handle actually here is the same kind of handle, a hammer handle. Um, again, with uh, concrete uh, weight. Um, this one we're going to use two hands together 
and we use it mainly for rotational kind of exercises. Okay, so I'll just walk through what we're going to do in terms of workout tonight. We're going to start with some light warm up exercises. We're going to go through with shadow boxing and skipping. This is just to get the body warmed up and loosened up. Okay. Then we'll go into using the dumbbells and the exercise bands. Following that, we use in chishi, two different sets of exercises utilizing in chishi. Uh, then we're going to go into working out the legs a little bit, squat and kick exercises. These are the kind of exercises that typically we'll do in muscle fashion training to build the strength of the legs and also the snapping, kicking ability and the flexibility of the hip joints and strength in the knee joints too. Then we'll be using the hammer or the long chishi for those rotational exercises that I talked about earlier. And finally, we're going to finish with the kettlebells. Uh, two different sets of exercises there uh, to build strengthening upper body, upper body and also snapping power and explosive power and strength in the connecting joints. Okay, right, let's move into our, into our warm up phase. You're only going to need, um, you know, about two meters square space to do all of these exercises. So you should be able to do these all, all of these at home quite easily. Or in the dojo. Okay, so we're going to move into the warm up phase. Um, first warm up is going to be shadow boxing. So shadow boxing is where you're moving lightly on your feet. Trying to simulate moving as if boxing with somebody, it's a sparring, okay? You be light on your feet, keep your, your weight on the balls of the feet, okay? Be mobile, be moving around, okay? Changing, moving forward, moving back, moving to the side, you know, changing, back, forwards, side, side, okay? And when you're moving a little bit, you're going to start turning the hands, okay? Just light movements, quick. Turn the occasional kick. If you want to go too overboard, too quick, let the, let the joints warm up. This is part of your warm up phase. Okay. Occasional knee. Elbows too, fine. Okay. It's going to help if you, you start to imagine that you've got somebody in front of you. Okay, that way you can start to duck and weave, duck and counter attack. The idea is to not be static, moving around, trying to get the body moving. You can see yourself in the camera, assuming you, you might be able to do, if you're watching this on Zoom, for example, then be aware of your sense of light as you're moving. Try not to expose your center line like this. Okay, keep it close. Even when attacking, yeah, don't allow, allow your center line, particularly your groin, up to your face to be exposed to your opponent. Keep it close. Even when you're changing, keep that center line closed, not open like this. Okay? Okay, good. So that was roughly a minute of movement. That would have got us warmed up just a little bit. So you have no other equipment. You can almost do shadow boxing as a way of uh, warming up, but also as a way of working on fitness and agility. Working one minute rounds, do two or three of those. When that's comfortable, you can increase the time of the round. So go to one, one minute and a half, for example, or increase the number of rounds. Go to five, go to 10, etc. Okay. Another great all round warm up exercise is skipping. So, we'll move into skipping here. Again, when you start, try and work for one minute. Appreciate that uh, if skipping isn't something you've done before. It might take a little while to actually get used to, to, to learn the technique. But um, learning to skip is a uh, worthwhile investment. Okay? So, we skip. Just to kind of basic skipping technique. 
There are many variations that you can start to work on. Yeah. Alternating legs, yeah. going more into a stepping, stepping onto the motion. Yeah. Doubling the skipping. Yeah. Try to keep it going. <laughs> Okay, good. So as I say, work for one minute or so to start with. Okay, so that should have got you uh, lightly warmed up. Just want to feel like the uh, muscles and the joints in particular are ready for a bit more movement. Okay, let's go into the dumbbells. So, dumbbells. You do want a light pair to start with, don't go heavy. If you've got a set of metal dumbbells at home, they're probably heavier. They've been designed for muscle building, okay? Take the weight off of them and just use the metal uh, um, pole in the middle, yeah? Just use the center part. That itself is probably gonna be about one kilo or two kilos in weight. And that will be enough to start, because what we're gonna do is fairly high repetitions of punching. So from here, we'll step out, and go down into a two down speed punching position. Okay, try and have your feet square. Okay, this time our center is facing entirely forward. We want to position our punching hand right in the middle of our uh, chest, just below the front of our solar plexus. The Matsubashiru, we have a fairly high hip dip position, so that's what we're going to practice. Other styles, maybe down here somewhere. It's not right or wrong, this is just what we do. Okay, and we're going to go for a good, smooth, continuous motion. Try and uh, control the breathing as we go. So I've got 50 reps to tap, I think. So it doesn't take long to do 50 reps. That was less, well, I'll put it back to 30 seconds. Okay, so if you're, if you're good with that, then let's bring you to Joe now. This is punching to the equivalent of the face level. Again, 50 reps. Big. Great, good. Okay, good. As an alternative to dumbbell for doing this, we can use the exercise band. Okay, so basic position we're going to string it around our back so that we can extend it and stretch forward with our hands. So it depends on the exercise uh, strategy you use in terms of how much resistance you have. Um, so you'll have to experiment with that, okay? But we're gonna do the same thing, okay? Punching. have any equipment you can use for this, obviously just doing punching practice okay, without any added resistance is a good exercise in itself. Okay, as variants, start with a center punch, with centering height and then center view. 
and go for Joe Hyatt. Okay, okay. Then you can go for twisting. Okay, trying not to lose your base. Twisting. Other variants I like to do are. Yeah. Alright, so this is a back fist or a hammer fist, followed by a kagetsuki or a hook. Yeah. This is a pulling, pulling hook. So the hands go out and arc and come back. That and arc and come back. This is effectively a double strike. Hitting with here, hitting with here or here. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, in another video, uh, I'm going to go into more into detail about different striking techniques. So that's just another variation that you may like to try and add into your Georgian movie too. Okay, so moving on, we move on to Shishi. Okay, so as I said earlier, Shishi is one of the foundation tools for. Okinawa and Hojo will also in the exercises. Almost, in fact, every dojo that I've been to, whether you have Hojo Nido, they have Chishi. The other thing that every dojo has is a Makiwara. Uh, if you don't know what that is, that's a striking post used for training abilities and structure uh, and power when hitting. Um, and you probably don't have a Makiwara at home, not many people do. It's not a bad project to do, um, and again, you can find uh, information, plenty of information on the internet about how to construct a makiwara, which is spelled M A K I W A R A, makiwara. Anyway, I'll do another session uh, on video in the future about techniques of training the makiwara. Let's go back to the chishi. As I mentioned earlier, the chishi is comprised of two main components the weight on one end and the long handle. Uh, the further away you hold from the weight, the more work the chishi makes you do. If you hold it very close, then you don't have to work quite so hard, obviously. So that's one basic tip for training the chishi. When you start, okay, you don't have to start right at the end. Start by holding the chishi close to the way. Okay? When you start, your wrists are gonna take, uh, not a lot of punishment, but your wrists are gonna probably do more work than they would normally do in your everyday life, unless you're, unless you're a tradesman and working life, right? So what we're gonna do is a warm pack size, is just manipulate the chi chi to get the wrists warm. Okay, so um, hold the chi chi near the weight and forward, back, forward, back. And to the side. Good. So if you notice my posture here, I've got a wide, stable base, just slightly wider than my shoulders. My shoulder width is slightly wider. My feet are parallel. Okay, my knees are slightly tucked in. We would call this uh, in Masbashru actually our Nihanshi stance, based on our Kata Nihanshi. Other stars would look at this as a what we call a horse riding stance, and where we've got this kind of grip here. But I've got a pretty strong base. I'm going to keep my elbows in, tucked in in front of my body, for these chi chi exercises. This is to promote good structure, I need to learn good basic structure. The further away my elbow goes from my body, the weaker it gets. So let's do the other side. Bear in mind what we just talked about in structure, try and get yourself into a good posture and structure, centered both sideways and forwards and backwards. Okay, again, just working this forwards, back, forwards, back, forwards, back, forwards, back, forwards, back, forwards, back, hands and side. Okay, next movement. We work with just one chi to start with, um, just so that you can get used to this. Okay, the movement's going to be keeping the uh, armpit closed and the elbow close to the body, pushing the chi out in front and then pulling back. As we push, we breathe out and breathe in. As we come back. Okay. 
So we're doing about 10 reps on each side. Again, make sure you've got the posture. Eight. Eight. Seven. Chi. Four. Four. Six. Ach. Two. Two. Good, okay. So, if you're tired there, you can take a little rest, but teach you down, that's what we're talk. Hey, next movement. We're going to do rotation movement. Push forward, right, rotate, over and forward. So, the teacher's going to the outside. Going to the outside, and I pull it over the shoulder and back to the center. As much as possible, I'm going to try and keep my elbow in close to the body. Allow the chi to fall forward. Use the momentum and roll over the top. Itch, knee, sun, chi, four, roll, chi, etch, q, two. Good. Okay. Next one, other side. Okay. Hey. Itch, knee. So, chi, o, do, chi, ach, ju, ju. Okay, and rest. Good. So you notice that this movement is very similar, very similar to a punching movement. And using the chi is one of the best ways to build structure and strength when it comes to basically using your punching, um, putting pushing strikes out. Okay, next movement. This is the third in this set, and what we're going to do is put those three together and set afterwards. Start with the chi chi out. This time we're going to bring it around the head and back over the shoulder again. Here and forward. Chi. Sun. Chi. Ko. Ok. Chi. Touch. Q. Okay. At the end of each of these movements, when the hands extended out, by the way, try to work on the stability. So we're supporting muscle, the dismiss muscle under here. Try to tense that at the end of each movement so that you work on all that stability. Stability will come from the supporting muscle and to a lesser extent from the muscles in the shoulder. Okay, other side. Sun, chi, ko, ok, chi, etch, chi, chi. So, you might also recognize this position there, which is very much like a Joe Danuke position. Um, so, Joe Danuke position is taught in pretty much every style of karate that I've seen anyway, as one of the basic foundation positions. Jo Dan, Chi Dan, Gye Dan, okay? Usually these are taught as blocks in English, or Uke in Japanese. Um, but it's useful to start thinking about these as directions of movement rather than techniques. You can build a lot of techniques on this structure and this position, um, both techniques that are Uke, techniques that are striking, and techniques that are a combination of them both. The better that you have the strength and structure behind your those positions, the better all those techniques will be. Okay, so let's combine those three exercises uh, into a continuous step. And this is going to be a step up to so use two cheat sheets. You don't have to do that straight away. You stick to one and try and do a continuous step. But I now find when you're moving into continuous movement, having two cheat sheets actually helps you to balance better. So that's why um, I would say go for two and see how you do. Again, partway through, if you start to struggle, you can always adjust your grip so that you're dealing with less leverage and therefore uh, less power and momentum that you have to deal with on the pitch. Okay, so back to the first exercise, just pushing out. Two, ten minutes, continuous outside. Pitch, knee, sun, 
cheap. Oh. Okay. Shit. Let's keep two. Good. Now we're going to drop one so we don't crash them together. It's me. Cheap. Oh. Change. It's me. Some. Cheap. Oh. Change again. It's me. Some. Cheap. Oh. Change. It's me. Some. Cheap. Oh. And then finish. Okay, good. You might have to do that whole complete set, well done. That's pretty much, that's uh, quite hard work. Um, but you're going to find that that kind of continuous movement and motion with Chi is where you really start to see the benefits both of learning structure, but also being able to create dynamic power without losing the structure. Okay, so before we move on, we're going to take a little break there. Uh, we're going to take a minute, have some water, have a drink, and we'll be right back. Okay. Okay, great. Let's get back into it. I hope had a good little break. Uh, put some water into you. Okay, so we're going to move into the second part of the whole Jundo session tonight. Um, yeah, we've already done the body quite a bit so far, so now we're going to work on the next. Right, we're going to do a squat and kick combination. It's essentially squatting, front kicking, squatting, front kicking. Just use this as a warm-up exercise for us to get back into movement after our break time. Um, there's a variation coming on this afterwards uh, where we're going to work it a bit more anyway. Okay, so basic position. So feet under the shoulders, parallel, okay, but natural stance, okay. We we'll keep the hands up out of the way of the legs, okay. Squat so that the elbows come pretty much down to the knees. Come up and front kick. Okay? You can kick as high as you're comfortable with. It doesn't have to be high. Okay? But as you warm up, you might want to go a little higher. So we're going to go right, left, right, left. Okay? So we're going to go for 50 reps to start with. Do as many as you can. Um, this is something you can build up as you go along. Okay? Kept up and got to the 50. That warmed up the legs and hips quite nicely. Okay, okay short break. Okay, next variation. It's going to work one of our, let's say, kicks that we only see in kata in Matsumachiru. Uh, what makes this interesting is that it's a variation on my Gary, the front kick. In other styles, this kick has been modified into. Sokoto, or side kick, where the foot comes out sideways with the blade of the foot going horizontally to the ground. You must make sure this is reserved as a front kick. The front kick just going off to the side. In other words, we're still making the front kick position here, yeah, with the foot upright, but we're going off to the side. 
Okay, so let's try these slowly. I'm going to do 10 on each side slowly just to try the technique. The main thing is to try and preserve the balance. We still have that stepping movement out, back, and then stand down. So we don't want to fall on. Yeah? Okay, go from the right and then the left. Right, pitch, in, turn, cheek, hook, hook, switch, touch, cube, cube, pitch, knee, turn, cheek, hook, hook, switch, touch, cube, cube, good. Okay, so just reference the cutter that we first see this in in our that's much real or show and resistance. Uh, it's Pinan Shodan. Pinan Shodan, the position where we twist, kick, and then twist back again. Okay, we come through here one, two, three. We twist here and turn uh, in the opposite direction the shoe go. So that's just your reference for where this movement comes from. Okay, good. So that was good. Great thighs, great the butt, great the knees. Most importantly, got you working your kicking ability. Kicking ability. Okay. Here we go. We're gonna move on to the hammer or the long chisha. So I'm gonna use the hammer to start with. Just because this one might be one that it's easier for you to get hold of. Um, if you look online, you'll find very similar looking exercise items called a mace, okay, or even a club bell, okay, a mace or a club bell. Again, yeah, these exercises go back to China, to India, to the Middle East, possibly even further than that. Okay, what we're going to do. Let's go back into our stable stance, which we're on my hunter stance, or uh, horse riding stance. Okay. We're going to hold the weight out in our middle. So you see it's right in my middle, and I'm holding it out away from the body. Okay. I want to feel quite stable here. So you can see that I have a line down my body, but I'm not stood with all my joints fully, fully closed or extended. A little bit of spring and flex. In there. Okay, and the spring and flex is important because what I want to do is dynamically use my whole body to manage the momentum, the movement of this weight. Okay. From the front, the important thing to note is that I'm not trying to take this in a great big circle. Okay, what I'm doing is pushing it back over one shoulder, small loop around across the back, and pulling it back over the other shoulder. I don't want it to go wider than my shoulders. I do, and we'll start to find that I'm losing strength and structure, um, and I'm very likely to damage my shoulders. Okay? If you've done martial arts, uh, and done it involved shoulder locks, you know that the shoulder is strong when it's working in this phase. And once it starts to go out wider, it gets weaker very, very quickly. In fact, if you want to break somebody's shoulder, you just need to take it that way, yeah? Going outside, essentially the width of the shoulders starts to make it very, very weak. You'll tear the muscles, okay? You'll damage the joint very easily. So that's the one thing to be careful of when using, particularly, let's say, a bigger, heavier chi chi, even the smaller ones, as I showed you earlier, keep chi chi rotating in above the shoulder. Don't try and take it out here in some big circle with the hand comes up much wider on the shoulder. Okay, so that's the safety point. The other one is, don't hit yourself in the back with this, okay? Control it here and bring it back over. Don't let it hit you in the back, bro. Okay, okay, that should be obvious, but you know, <laughs> we all make that mistake, right? Okay, here we go. So, we're gonna push it over the left shoulder and put it back over our right shoulder. Let's try one. Pitch. Knee. How is that? Keep going. So, 
sheep, goat, rook, chitch. I'm bringing it back to start position each time. Okay, from here, start and bring it back here. All right, I just practice we're going to change hands and go in the opposite direction. So you can see that my upper hand here is going to then push over the opposite shoulder and move over my right shoulder and bring it back over my left. Okay, so hopefully you're getting a feel for the movement again. If it feels like you're only working your shoulders and your arms, then um, try to relax your body, okay? Try to relax your knees. Okay? Try and use your whole body as a counterweight to the movement of this weight. Perhaps if you look from the side, you can see that my body is going to be shifting to counter the movement of the weight. Okay, let's do a few things here. You see that my center of gravity shifts forwards and backwards to counterweight. Okay? So my knees and my ankles, my hips are relaxed. So this means that I don't make my arms and my shoulders do all this. Okay, so it may take a few repetitions for you to get used to this movement and comfortable with it. Um, that's fine. You can pause now if you feel you need more practice just on the technique. Uh, what I'm going to do now is move into uh, 20 reps on each side and then change into the large chi sheet just to show that you can do the same thing with the large chi sheet. Okay. Itch. In. So. Chi. Go. Look, switch, touch, cue, chew, itch, knee, sa, chi, go, look, switch, touch, cue, chew. Good. Okay. I'm just going to turn to the side so you can see what the movement looks like from the side. Go over there with this one. So that last exercise can be a real power exercise, but you don't want to go too heavy too quickly for obvious reasons. If you can't control the weight, you can't protect the shoulders and the joints. You probably can't stop yourself from hitting yourself in the head or in the back, for example. You don't want any of those outcomes. That's not going to help you train continuously. And the thing is you want to do is always do the training in a way that you can progressively and continuously improve incrementally. Okay? With this training, you're unlikely to jump forward uh, in ability. This requires consistency um, and then building slowly and slowly up in a controlled method. Okay? If you want to avoid injury. Now, um, we've all done it. Okay? I've injured myself in training because I was too ambitious or impatient. Okay? But believe me, if you take an injury, okay, that means you can't train for several weeks, for example. Well, it does it set you back even further than you were before. So be smart about it and be patient, be diligent, be consistent, and build up your ability that way. Okay, okay last uh, exercise that we're going to do is with kettlebells. Okay, so 
Two different exercises. I like both of these for, for different reasons. Um, kettlebells are very useful for dynamic swinging, punching, thrusting type exercises. Okay. The first one we're going to do is a combination of those movements. Okay? We've used kettlebells before, and this should be very familiar to you. Maybe not this combination, but certainly the components of it. Um, if you haven't, then take your time to practice each movement um, and then put them into combination. So the first component is swing. Okay? Here. Yeah. Okay. I've done not lifting the kettlebells very high at the moment. What I wanted to do is get used to combining squat, partial squat with the swing. Keep your head and your center aligned. Okay, what we don't want is this kind of thing, okay, where you're getting lazy and not bending your legs. Okay, this is also a workout and exercise for your legs, your hips, your knees, the squat and the swing. Okay, what we do is add a catch to the end of that swing. So go back and come forward and we catch. So what happened there was, swing back, swing up, and flip over and catch the kettlebells on the top of your wrists. The first time you do this, it might be a bit painful, but you're just gonna have to get used to it. <laughs> okay, one, two, catch. The timing becomes good, there's very little impact. Right. Okay, so let's just practice 10 of those. Itch, me, sound, chi, go, go, itch, touch, cue, chew. Good, okay. So we'll get out a component to this. Okay. Once we've done this swing, we catch, we pull back, thrust up, come back, and punch back. Going back in our swing, catch into the shoulders, thrust up, bring them down with control, punch forward. Now that the weight, when you punch forward and punch, but don't let go of the weight, obviously. You don't want to smash things, damage things. Let the weight roll forward. Up, forward, and back. Okay, so let's go for a set of 10 of these. Right, we're going to start down, okay, with the swing. Push it backwards, and then we'll come back. Okay, push in, up, in, in, up, punch, sun, in, up, punch, chi, punch. Go, go. Keep looking forward. This will help you to maintain good posture. Don't look down, because then your head will arch forward, your neck will arch, and your posture will suffer. Good. Good. Okay, so one thing to note when you're doing that, that last phase when you're punching the weight down, try not to do this. Okay? You'd be tempted to counterbalance the weight going out of here by taking your central down to the back yeah, to counterbalance. So in this case though, don't do that, because that's kind of bad posture for punching that. And what we're trying to do is simulate a punching movement here. So when you're doing this one, thrust, yeah, try not to have the bum going back, yeah. Cash, thrust forward. You can use the hip to initiate this forward punching movement, right? So down, up. And use the hip to punch forward. Okay, next exercise we'll get to that. This is the last exercise of our whole day work next night. If you've managed to follow all this, all, this all the way through, well done. Great job. Um, very proud of you. Okay, so last one. Again, we're going to get into our stable stance, okay, centered, and bring the kettlebells up and in front of the shoulders. 
and just rest in. Okay? You should use kettlebells here that are relatively light. Okay? You don't need to, again, have very, very heavy kettlebells here. This is more for repetition than it is for um, heavy, heavy um, uh, bodybuilding type of uh, movements. Okay, so we're going to twist and punch and then swing and catch. Twist, punch, swing and catch. So in one movement, Okay, so what I want to do is try and use a smooth movement originating from the hips and transmitting through the arms. So we're just going to go through a set of 20, that's 10 in each direction. Here we go, from the right side. Itch, knee, sun, cheek, go, go, chich, hatch, chich, itch, knee, Good. And coming back to our stable position and finishing. Good. So when you start to do these kind of exercises, you're probably going to feel a bit of stress in your joints, particularly on your elbow joints and your wrist joints. Okay, and that's fine. What you want to do actually is, is build up the strength in the connective tissue. One of the things that's characteristic about Okinawan Karateka, with a lot of years of practice, is that we tend to build up very strong connecting tissue. This is good. It's good for your ability to do your karate without sustaining too much injury and damage. Um, it's good for your long-term health. And it really is the secret of strength in your karate. You won't get stronger in your karate by building big, bulging individual muscles like a bodybuilder. What you want is strength in your structure all the way up from your toes, all the way up through your body, Right through your limbs, and that comes from your connecting tissue and your coordination of all of your tissue. And this is called chin pitch in Okinawan, it literally means muscle and bone, but it refers to the, the ability to coordinate and put structure uh, instantaneously into your body structure. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this uh, whole your session. Um, there will be more to come. Well done, now you can take a break, and I'll see you next time.